Shalom, shalom, shalom. Get, first off, giving our honor and praises to Yahweh and to his son, Yahweh Shah. The battle axes are the most high coming to you with another uh, first day of the week breakdown. My way I was Sabbath, Lord's will, brothers and sisters. Blessed to see that day. I know uh, I got a couple of things to cover today. The name of today's class is Follow Not the Manner of the Gentiles. Follow not the manner of the Gentiles. Even going into it, because brothers and sisters, y'all know what the hell is going on today. You know, we see with uh, Juneteenth, you know, then we see with, you know, Wicked Father's Day and so forth. So, you know, we don't kind of go over those things and touch on them. But we tell brothers, man, for brothers and sisters that know about this truth, that's celebrating these things, man, shame on you. You know, and the Most High God is not going to play the games. He's going to put you to death if you don't come up out of the ways of the Gentiles. The Most High God never gave us those hella days like we call in the battle axis. You know, because they're not the Most High God's high holy days. Remember, our high holy days had significance in the Bible. They represented our true freedom. I would say Juneteenth, they giving us a day saying that the, the slaves are free. But guess what? We still in captivity, man. You paying taxes. Guess what? They ain't put us back in our homeland. We still in captivity, brothers and sisters, whether you believe it or not. You know, they just took the collars off around our necks, but we still roaming around in the backyards, man. You know, don't be deceived by those things, man. Like we say, uh, y'all know brothers and sisters, they got any questions or comments, put those things in the chat. First precept we're going to go to, though, is the book of Leviticus, chapter 20 and verse... 23 and ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation which i cast out before you for they committed all these things and therefore i abhorred them so the most high god shalom brother ray shalom brother ray shalom brother leonard uh most high god said don't walk in the manners of the other nations man he cast them out before us and this is mainly going into shalom sister Dobbs. This is going into, like we say, when the Most High God was casting out all the Hamitic nations or African nations, getting them up out of our land. We had a job to do to get them up out of our land, you know, so we wouldn't follow in the ways that they were going in. Just similar to what our people are doing today, you know, celebrating Ju Juneteenth. You're, you're behind and celebrating Juneteenth to cel celebrating Father's Day. But did you celebrate the Sabbath day yesterday, you know? These are the things that we should be celebrating. The Most High God got a Sabbath day every, every week, man. And our people break their necks to follow behind Esau's law, statutes, commands, but we don't do those things for the Most High God's high holy days. I'm going to read this again from the top. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 20 and verse 23. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nations. The manners of the nations is going into their traditions, their way of life, their heritage, the foods that they ate, the customs that they did. You know, we know some of the traditions of the Hamitic nations or the African nations, you know, uh, putting their heads in the, in the butts of cows, cutting and mutilating their faces and stuff. That was never our tradition, Israel. Most High God told us, don't walk in those manners, man. That was never our heritage. That was never our tradition. The Most High God gave us a, gave us a holy and righteous tradition that we're commanded to keep. I'm going to read this. Hold your precept in the book of Leviticus. I'm going to go to. Uh, Shalom, Shalom, brother Yehud. Shalom, Adiba, uh Book of Sirach, chapter 17. Let's see what our heritage was that the Most High God gave us. Let's see if it was Father's Day. Let's see if it was Juneteenth. Let's see if it was some of these things. Shalom. Uh. Uh, I live branch channel. That's right. That's exactly right. With the new moons and all those different type of things. We just celebrated Feast of Pentecost last Sunday. And we had a great time. First fruits. Man, we had a great time, man. You know, you could really feel a spirit that was up in there. And you can feel these things, man. You say, you know, you're not feeling any type of spiritual, divine spiritual feelings when you're celebrating Father's Day you know, or Juneteenth, especially if you know the history behind Juneteenth. But I want to get this precept right quick. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 17 and verse 11. 
Besides this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for inheritance. So the Most High God gave us the law, statutes, and commandments for our heritage. What's pertained in your heritage? The foods that you eat, the clothing that you wear, the high holy days that you celebrate, the things that you did as a, as a nation, your way of life. Those things is what goes into your heritage. What America has given us was just a knockoff of what the white man is doing. That's all, that's all that it's doing. It's just watered down stuff from what Esau has given our people, man. You know, 4th of July and our people celebrate these things. Some of our people in ignorance, but even in this day, like we say, it should be no way that brothers and sisters shouldn't know the meaning behind, behind these holidays. You know, like how they got 4th of July coming up, man. We were still in slavery during that time. 4th of July is not for the so-called black man, Hispanic man, or Native American man, which are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Those high ho those hella days are not for us. You know, we have to think about why we're celebrating. Then our people pick the, the biggest blue, the biggest red, white, uh, uh, American flag outfits that they can find, man. Just a total mockery of our people, man. I'm going to read this again. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 17 and verse 11. Besides this, he gave them knowledge and a law of life for inheritance. He made an everlasting covenant with them and showed them his judgments. He never dealt with the other nations. We're the only one that got his judgments. We're the only one that got his law, statutes, and commandments. Now, guess what? We're just squandering those things away by walking in the ways of the Gentiles. That's not according to the Bible. And we wonder why we're destroyed as a nation of people because we don't even want to take on the heritage that comes from the almighty God, the all-powerful God. Our people look at Esau as if they are gods, you know, and that's going off. That's totally going off. It says, their eyes saw his majesty, Salaki. Their eyes saw the majesty of his glory and their ears heard his glorious voice. And he said unto them, Beware of all unrighteousness. Celebrating these wicked hella days is unrighteous, according to the Bible, man. Like we say, if it's not pertained in the high holy, holy days in the book of Leviticus and the book of Deuteronomy, those where you find God's high holy days, that's where you uh, find out where how to serve the most high God in righteousness, not in unrighteousness. I'm going to read this again. The book of Sirach, chapter 17 and verse 14. And he said unto them, beware of all unrighteousness. And he gave every man commandment concerning his neighbor. Meaning what? The neighbors of our own people and plus of the other nations on how to deal with them, man. That's where we, we go back to what? Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 23. We're going to read it again from the top. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 23. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nations which I cast out before you. So if the Most High God cast them out before us, put them on the bottom of us, why in the hell would we want to go back and ce celebrate those things that they put on us? Most High God made us to be above all people. Yes, even Esau. Even though he has financial power and military power, the Most High God is still ordained that we're better than him, man. And we know it, man. Come on, man. We see it. We see who dominates the sports. We see who dominates they would say even on a spiritual aspect, even on a mental intellect, we see that. Some of the youngest people that come out are uh, Shalom, Shalom, Sister Genesis. I know even some of the youngest people ever has been uh, so-called Black, Hispanics, and Native Americans uh, lineage. We see these things all the time. It says, and ye shall not walk in the manners of the nations which I cast out before you, for they committed all these things, and therefore I abhorred them. But I have said unto you, ye shall inherit their land, and I will give it unto you to possess it, a land that flowed with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which have separated you from the other people. So like you're from other people. So the most like God separated us from the other people. So that means don't do the things that they do. Don't celebrate the hell of days that they celebrate. Don't eat the foods that they eat. Don't wear the clothes that they wear. Most High God gave us a great heritage. It says, verse 25, ye shall therefore put 
put difference between clean beast and unclean, between unclean fowls and clean. And ye shall not make your souls abominable by beast or by fowl or by any manner of living thing that creepeth on the ground, which I have separated from you as unclean. So going into even with the foods that we ate, no pork is not lawful now. Stop listening to these dumb Christians when they trying to go to the book of Acts chapter 10. They always talk about the Israelites cherry picking scriptures. That's literally what they're doing. They're cherry picking what. Peter, the vision that Peter sent and applying it to the dietary law, saying that now you can eat that. No, the Most High God don't change. So if he ordained that in the Old Testament, what the hell you think is still ordained in the New Testament? The Most High God has given us the law on things we can and cannot eat. That's why people play health-wise as a nation of people, suffering from gout, suffering from high blood pressure, heart disease, stomach cancer. Many other different things that we suffer from because we're not taking care of our bodies and eating the right things that are according to the Bible. Verse 26 is the point as well. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I the Lord am holy and have severed you from other people that ye shall be mine. So the Most High God has separated us from that. Shalom, Sister Mitra. They have separated us from that. So why would we want to do the things that they are doing, man? You know, that's leading to us being destroyed more and more as a nation of people, man. Like we said, brothers and sisters have any questions, please put them in the comments. So the most I got told us to come up out of these things. Because like we say, even to touch on to touch on Juneteenth, like we say, this was something afterwards. Uh because they uh so like let me get my words right. Just now coming into the south. That guess what? We had been out of slavery, but it didn't reach the South until two years later. So that's why a lot of our people celebrate and that's why they commemorate June 19th. But we got to understand that we're what, brothers and sisters? We're still in captivity. Like we said, we're still paying taxes as a nation of people. That is captivity. And we're going to prove this thing. Let's go to the book of Nehemiah. Brothers and sisters, y'all know the precepts. Put them in, put them in the chat, man. We say we're here to learn, man. Let's go to the book of Nehemiah chapter 9. Show you, because Nehemiah was giving us understanding on these things. We're still in captivity, and we're going to outline some of these things. This is the book of Nehemiah, chapter 9 and verse 36. Behold, we are servants this day, and for the land that thou gavest unto our father to eat the fruit thereof and the good thereof. Behold, we are servants in it. Now, we know Nehemiah was in the Persian and Mede captivity. A lot of Christian apologetics don't think that the Israelites were in captivity under the Persians, but they were. He's literally outlining those things, man. And we've been seeing brothers turn to him on those things, man. Like our brothers from Saqqara and so forth, man. Keep at it, man. All praise to the Most High. Because by the spirit of Yahweh, man, we're going to be destroying Christianity doctrines, man. And even to bring it up to today, man, we're still in captivity. And he's going to outline some of these things. I'm going to read it from the top again. This is the book of Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 36. Behold, we are servants this day. And for the land that thou gavest unto our fathers to eat the fruit thereof and the good thereof. Behold, we are servants in it. Because we can even apply this to today. The Most High God gave this side of the earth to what? To the... Uh, uh, to the northern tribe. Guess what? It reaped and grew fruit for them, but he sent Esau, Christopher killing Columbus over here in 1492 to guess what? Take them and rob them of their spoils. Now their fruits have become their fruits, you know, and we have become what servants in these things. Verse 37, and it yielded much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us because of our sins. Now, just like we just with so like it went into now it's yielding seed unto them because of our sins sins is breaking god's law statutes and commandments sin is doing what celebrating juneteenth sin is celebrating father's day these things were never ordained in the book of leviticus in the book of deuteronomy most High god never told us to keep these things how the hell are you supposed to be separate from all other nations if you're doing the same damn things that they're doing I mean, it makes no sense. All praises, Genesis. 
Now the priest said, we're going to go to the book of Baruch chapter three, verse eight. It says, and it yielded much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us because of our sins. Also, they have dominion over our bodies. That, hey, that right there, you have to let that thing resonate. They even have dominion over our bodies, brothers and sisters, for us breaking the commandments. So if Esau telling us to do something, guess what? If you don't do it, you'll be put to death for those things. A lot of times, brothers, they go move to the beat of that thing, man. They go move to the beat of Esau's drum, man, whether they like it or not, man. We reading what the Bible say. It says, and over our cattle. Because what? They killed off. Uh, tried to kill off the buffalo, you know, bringing a pig and unclean meats over here and so forth. It says, at their pleasure. And we are in great distress. And because of all this, we make a sure covenant and write it. And our princes, Levites, and prince seal it unto so even during this time, guess what? The Most High God was saying that we was in captivity all the way up into today. And we're going to get that in the book of Baruch, precept for Nehemiah 9 and 36. We're in captivity, brothers and sisters. We're going to prove that. We're going to even get it out of the mouth of uh, Christ. Shalom, brother Yaakov. We're going to even get it out of the uh, out of our Lord's mouth, Yahweh Shah. This is the book of Baruch. Now, Baruch is, was Jeremiah's scribe. Baruch was during the time of the Babylonian captivity. Guess what? He's going to let us know that they was in captivity. And we know Nehemiah was in what? The Persian captivity after the Babylonian captivity. Brothers and sisters got to know your history on the captivities as well. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 3 and verse 8. I'm going to start up at verse 7. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 7. And for this cause thou hast put thy fear in thine heart in our hearts, to the intent we should call upon thy name and praise thee in our captivity. So that's what we should be doing right now, brothers and sisters, that know that you are an Israel, that you're an Israelite, that you got to be keeping the law, statutes, commandments. The most high God is putting that fear in us to do what? Call upon his name. Because we're gonna need these things as we get more and more and approaching the day of Jacob's trouble. You know, we're going to have to literally get down on our hands and knees, pray fast, throw up many prayers for this thing to ask the most high God to have mercy on us in that time. It says, for we have called to mind all the iniquity of our forefathers that sinned before thee. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse and to be subject to payments. So for us breaking God's laws, statutes, and commandments, we're subject to payments. So Esau get a piece of your money before you even see the damn check, man. That's captivity, man. I'm talking about taking off a lot of money. Sometimes brothers don't even want to work overtime because they snatching out so much damn money, man. Nah, man, I'm, I'm giving Esau just straight 40 hours, man. And hell, don't really want to give him that, hell, to tell you the truth. Because we know anything over that, it's like you just working for free. But that's the, the price that we pay for what? for breaking God's laws, statutes, and commandments. It says, behold, we are yet this day in our captivity where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse and to be subject to payments, meaning paying taxes, according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which have departed from the Lord our God. Verse nine, hear Israel, the commandments of life, give ear to understand wisdom. So he's literally telling us what to do to get out of this situation to get out of paying taxes, to get out of working for Esau, slaving for Esau. We got to hear the Most High God and we got to be keeping his commandments. Let's show our people that, guess what? Christ even reiterated this thing. Go to the book of Matthew real quick. Matthew who's chapter 17 and verse 25. We started verse 24. You get the point, because even Christ, you know, Christ is the master teacher. So he was giving them understanding to let them know, guess what? We was in captivity. You know, all praise our, our brother Abaya put Haggai 1 and 6. We'll get that next. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 17 and verse 24. I'm going to read it again. The book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 24. Make sure y'all write these precepts down to show and to let our people know that we're still in captivity. We're proving this by going to a proof 
a precept to show that guess what? If you're paying taxes, guess what? You're in captivity. Because like we say, I don't know if brothers and sisters may know this, but the company GM, General uh, Motors, certain of these big companies, uh, GE, General Electric, a lot of these big multi-billion dollar companies, they don't pay no damn tax. A lot of people don't even know these things, man. Guess what? The Republicans and the Democrats has put forth laws to give them subsidies on not paying taxes and so forth. Like I say, I thought, guess what? This is the land of equal opportunity. I thought, guess what? If you made more, that you should take more. But no, they're using the lower class and the middle class to guess what? Uh, 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 provide for the majority of the taxes around her. I mean, that, that's not uh, equal opportunity. And that's not fair, man. This is the book of Matthew chapter 17 and verse 24. And when they would come to Cap Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, doth not your master pay tribute? So the scribes and Pharisees was asking Christ, or uh, asking Peter, does not your master, does not Christ pay taxes? You know, trying to catch him up, trying to always accuse Christ of something. Verse 25, he said, yes. And when he was coming to the house, Yahweh prevented him saying, what thinkest thou, Simon, of whom do the kings of the earth take tribute or take custom or tribute of their own children or of strangers. So Christ asked Peter when his other alias is this Simon, Simon Peter, he asked him, of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? He's saying, who do the rulers of the earth take taxes of? It says of their own children or of strangers. So Christ was asking him, do they take taxes from us or do they take taxes from their own people? Let's see what uh, Peter said. Verse 26, Peter said unto him of strangers. Yahweh South said unto him, then the children are free. I don't know. That's some heavy stuff right there. Christ is literally letting them know that guess what? They're not taking uh, taxes of their own people. They're taking taxes of strangers. Christ let them know, then guess what? They people are free. And he was letting Peter know that guess what? We're still in captivity. During this time, Christ, Peter, the 12 disciples, they were under the rule of the Romans during this time. And the Romans was taxing all the nations, but they wasn't taxing their own people or the nations that they derived from. And they knew during that time that they were Edomites, man. I'm going to read this again. Verse 26, Peter said unto him of strangers. Now, we understand there's two types of strangers in the Bible. You got the strangers of our own people that may stay in other countries outside of Jerusalem. Then you got the, the real strangers, which are the strangers of the other nations. That's who he's talking about. It says, Peter said unto him of strangers, Yahweh said unto him, then are the children free. So he knew those things, man. So even Christ knew he had to pay. Guess what? Shalom, brother Michael. Shalom, brother Roy. Uh, even Christ knew that they still have to pay taxes and that guess what? If you're paying taxes, then you're not free according to the Bible, man. It's not a precept that I want. Let's go to the book of Bear with me a moment, brothers and sisters. So like we said, when our people are thinking that just because they're free or have a good job, good paying job, a nice heart, uh, nice house, couple of cars, you know, look money in the bank. Remember, that's just a drop in the bucket because the Most High God promised the planet Earth to us. So the lit trinkets that we have, man, it's nothing compared with the Most High God is promising us or had already promised us. Remember, the whole Earth belongs to the Israelites, man. So what is what, what does those things mean? What does a, a job paying thirty or forty something dollars an hour mean to when? You should be able to get that times 10 and not be able to work, man. I mean, that's that's nothing. You know, that's nothing at all, man. Try to find this preset. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 22 and verse 17. Because like we say, this is going into, if we're paying taxes, then guess what? We're not free as a nation of people, man. 
This is the book of Matthew, chapter 22 and verse 17. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? So like we say, the scribes and the Pharisees was always trying to catch Christ up, always trying to accuse him of some of being unlawful of wickedness. So this is another question that they pose to him. Is it lawful to guess what? Pay taxes unto tribute? Uh, or to Caesar, just like we was dealing with the sister out there at camp yesterday. I don't pay no taxes. Then Captain Jeroboam asked the sister, sister, do you go to the grocery store? Yes, I go to the grocery store. Sister, your ass is paying taxes. Stop playing the games, man. Do you go and buy clothes? Yes, I go and buy. Sister, you paying taxes. Guess what? Esau going to always get his straight off the top. I don't give a damn if you own land. Guess what? You paying taxes on that land. Guess what? Even to get the damn seeds that you're using to try to plant on it. And that's good for brothers and sisters. You know, we're always thinking about doing those things as well over here at the Battle Axe. Not to knock that. That's a great thing to do. But to literally say that you don't ain't using Esau for nothing, stop it, man. Because then, guess what? That'll be breaking the curse in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47 and 48. Remember, we got to go to them in want of all things, man. Not to say that it's not good to try to do on your own. That's right. I'm pretty sure, uh, Brother Michael, many brothers and sisters owe the IRS here. I know like uh, <laughs> Brother Gorilla Hebrew, he told me, hey, man, brothers have to catch me when they can, man, because I, <laughs> I understand on that. You know, we try to live lawfully as possible. Don't get me wrong. Live lawfully as much as you can. But we know Esau, they're going to try to take it all, man. They're going to try to take all of it. But the book of Matthew chapter 22 and verse 17 again from the top. Tell us therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Yahweh shall perceive their wickedness and said, why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he said unto them, whose image and subscription? So Christ is telling us like we tell our people today, nigga, if you so free, why your money, why your face ain't on the money? This is the same thing Christ is saying. Whose image and subscription it is on the money that we deal with today. And don't think that Esau is not trying to be slick by trying to put Harriet Tubman on a $20 bill. Oh, see, 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 we gave y'all something. Man, that don't mean a damn thing, man. That don't mean a damn thing. After hundreds of years, because of what she was trying to do, now y'all acknowledge that. Man, well, y'all can keep that madness, man. Y'all really can, because all of it's going to burn. When the Most High God send them nukes, it says, and he said unto them, whose is this image and subscription? And they said unto him, Caesar's. Then said he unto them, render therefore unto Caesar's the things which are Caesar's and unto God the things that are God. So he was telling them, hey, I know I'm in captivity. Like many of our people, hey, Esau going to get his. Guess what? We're going to do the Lord's work, man. Give them their taxes. Let them do all that stuff, man. So guess what? We could continue in doing the Lord's work. So we know that we're still in captivity because guess what? We're paying taxes because they ain't put us back in our homeland because we have no, uh, not our own economic might or military might, man. And like we said, these things are reaffirmed by Christ. Like we said, let's go to the book of... Because like we say, even with Father's Day, let's get this right quick. Like I said, those things go back to pagan hella days, man. Going back to Greek, Greekish and Roman uh, customs. Let's get this real quick. So lock your brothers and sisters, hey, y'all, y'all already know. Bear with me a moment, boy. Like, damn. Yes, I don't want this truth getting out, boy. Bear with me. I know they didn't shut it off on Facebook. Let's see. Try to see if we can get it back up. I know 
we still live. Make sure y'all put it in the chat if y'all can still see it on YouTube, brothers and sisters. I'm going to read this again while we try to get back uh, Facebook. Uh, how Father's Day was started. Where did Father's Day come from? So Noah Smart Dodd of Spookan, Washington, is usually credited for originating Father's Day. She is said to have had the idea. She is said to have had the idea in 1909 while listening to a sermon on Mother's Day which was emerging as a holiday. On June 5th, 1908, a West Virginia church sponsored the nation's first event explicitly in honor of fathers, a Sunday sermon in memory of the 362 men who had died in the previous December's explosion at the Fairmount Coal Company mines in, Mo in Mohagana. But it was a one-time commemoration and not an annual holiday. So Esau just put these things forth as they see fit, man. They really was doing this, like we say, in commemoration of these Edomites that died in a coal mine accident. I mean, come on, man. These things are not ordained of the Most High God. And we got to stop taking these things as such, man. Like we say, let's go to the, the main priest that we always go to. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 5, verse 29, man. Yeah, then took off the, uh, let's see if I can try to get this up. This is the book of Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we are to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Yahweh, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him at God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. The point we want is verse 29. I'm going to read it again. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. By us keeping these traditions and hell days, guess what? We're obeying men rather than God. And that's going off according to the scriptures, brothers and sisters, man. Let's get another precept. Let's go to the book of Colossians. Brothers and sisters, I always should know these precepts, the one that have been around and been in this truth for a while. Certain precepts just got to pop up in your head when you're dealing with certain topics in the Bible or in the world. Go to the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. It says, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men because just like how we read father's day is a tradition of men you won't read about these things being a law of god it says after the traditions of men after the rudiments of the world and not after christ these things are not after christ brothers and sisters man like we say you should guess what reverence your father every day for brothers and sisters that have had the opportunity of having their fathers in their life I didn't have my father in my life. You know, I had my grandfather, I had my uncles, you know what I'm saying? I'll praise to the most high God, but I never had my father in my life. But guess what? For you brothers that have been lucky enough to have those things, guess what? You're supposed to honor them every day, man. That's one of the 10 commandments, man. Let's get that. We ain't just giving you a specific day to honor them on, man. We got to stop with the madness. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 12. And it reads, honor thy father and thy mother. Let me, let me see if it says something else. Let me see if it says, honor thy father and thy mother on the day that Esau the white man told you to. No, it don't say that. It's literally telling you, honor your father and thy mother. Is this just some days? No, this is telling you every day. You're supposed to do those things. You ain't gonna honor them some days and then guess what I'm gonna take? No, I wanna honor you this week, mama. No, I want to honor you this week, Father. I'm going to honor you next week. I'm going to honor you on the day that Esau uh, chose. It says, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And this is one of the big ten, like Christians love to say, you know. 
This is one of the big ten. So the most high God is commanding us. He ain't giving us just no no day day. No, you're commanded to honor your father and your mother every day, man. Let's go to the book of Mark. Because our people love commandments of men more than the commandments of the most high. We see it all the time, man. You know, that's what they have. They push that notion in Christianity that God's laws is done away with. We're looking at them. Who the hell told you that? We know who told you that. Master told you that, man. But that's not according to the Bible, man. Our people have to come up out of that madness and that nonsense, man. Because that's all that it is. Let's see. To the book of Mark. Let's see. Want that one in the book of Matthew. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John give all of them is going into the gospel, but we know that Mark's account was slightly different from Matthew's. Luke's account is different from Matthew's. Like we said, we love to use Matthew's and John because they have they were first our witnesses of those things of Yahweh. But we we use them all as well. Let's go to the book of uh, Matthew. Chapter 15. Because our people love to do the commandments of men. I'm going to read this. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 15, and verse 8. I'm going to start at verse 7. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 7. Ye hypocrites, well did I size prophesied of you, saying, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, and honor it. Honor it me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And that's what our people do all the time, man. We honor the Lord with our mouth. Won't he do it? Saved by the blood. Hey, I know uh, he's blessing me. We honor the Most High God with our lips. But guess what? In our actions, guess what? We don't put forth the work we're vain in serving the most high god in our actions and he's the most high god is letting us know christ is letting us know that we do what we love god's we love men laws more than the most high god's laws i'm gonna read this again verse nine but in vain they do worship me teaching for doctrines the commandments of men and that's what our people fall victim to every single time god's laws is done away with you can eat pork even here in Creflo Holla, if you, hey, really, if you try to keep the commandments, you're sinning. I mean, that's just total confusion and madness, man. Hey, he's straight going off, man. Let's get the other account in the book of uh, Mark, chapter 7, and verse 6. This is the book of Mark saying the same thing. This is the book of Mark, chapter 7, and verse 6. He answered and said unto them, Well, had Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, because it's written in the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 13. Whenever you see as it is written, that means that the prophets were quoting from the Old Testament. And like we say, the New Testament is just an abbreviation of the Old Testament. That's all it is. They're saying the same thing. They're just being using different words because of the times that they were in. Like we say, during the time of the Roman captivity, you couldn't speak against Rome. So they had to word certain scriptures in, in certain ways not to be brought up on treasonous charges. You have to understand a political system during that time. You couldn't speak out against Caesar. You couldn't speak out against Rome or you got put to death. Now in America, I'll praise to the Most High God. He's given us uh, basically freedom of speech to, guess what, call the white man the devil that the Bible speaks of and actually read the Bible as it is written, not sparing none. I'm going to read it again. This is the book of Mark, chapter 7 and verse 6. He answered and said unto them, Well, had Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honored me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Verse 8 is what I want. For laying aside the commandment of God, Ye hold, the ye hold the tradition of men. So our people cast God's laws to the side. No, I don't want to eat pork. My people been eating pork since, guess what, we was in slavery. That don't mean continue that tradition, brother or sister. 
Remember, the slave masters gave us, guess what, the slops, the sloppy seconds, like how we known as it today. You know, the worst parts of the pig, we had no choice to eat those things. We was eating those things to survive and as judgment from the Most High God for breaking his commandments. Now, guess what? We have an opportunity to research, do diligent search and uh, history concerning the pig. Seeing how it's an unclean animal, that the Most High God made that animal to be what? The garbage disposal of the earth. Then we'll still take that and then guess what? Eat those things. And then, you know, guess what? Not only are we physically in captivity, but we're also what? Still mentally and spiritually in captivity as well. Because now you got the opportunity to read the Bible where the Most High God is literally telling us not to do that in the book of Leviticus chapter 11 verse 7 and we still do it. that's how we lay aside the commandments of god to follow the traditions of men verse 8 again from the top for laying aside the commandment of god ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do so he's just making reference to that but guess what this can be made as a broad statement like we say celebrating christmas celebrating mother's day celebrating easter no, the Bible tells you to celebrate what? The Feast of Pentecost, the Passover, the Tabernacles, the Feast of Dedication. The Bible tells you to eat clean food. Don't eat pork. But our people lay those things aside to guess what? Keep up the traditions of men. And like we said, brothers don't repent for those things. The most highest God is going to put you to death. You know, we can't play the games. We can't spare not. It's our job to bring these things out, man. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Chapter 62 and verse 6, it says, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace. A watchman is a person that watches out for danger, you know, letting and warning our people, you know, the things to come or what's going to go down. So like the brother says, hey, come here right quick. I'm going to read this again. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 62. Get this back up on Facebook. Bear with me a moment. I know they done took down the Facebook channel. We're trying to get it back up real quick. I'm going to read this, though. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 62 and verse 7. Verse 6. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night, because it's our job to call out these false traditions and these commandments of men you know letting our people know guess what don't celebrate those things celebrate the laws that's in the book of leviticus chapter 23 it says which shall never hold their peace day nor night ye that make mention of the lord keep not silence so the most high god is constantly telling us that guess what if we're If we're talking about the Bible, the Most High God is commanding us to constantly call these things out, call out our people's sins to guess what? Cause our people to wake up and repent so that they may have an opportunity to make it to the kingdom. It says, verse 7, and give him no rest till he established, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Meaning what? Constantly pray and bug the Most High God. When are you going to bring judgment, Lord? Please save us out of this condition. Please set us back up on high. Shalom, shalom. Uh, brother, by, uh, pre please set us back up on high. We got the Facebook back up and running. Hey, you already know how Esau is, man. Uh, please, you know, Put us back on the uh, the status that we once were, you know, set us back up on high and put these other nations back down below us. You know, whether or not brothers and sisters believe that thing or not, because like we say, the world was given to Israel, man. You know, and this one of brothers favorite sh chapters in the apocrypha. Like we say, we you know this one of the main reasons they took this out because it makes it so plain, man. Let's go to the book of Second Ezra, chapter six, verse 54. We get straight to the point. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 6, verse 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, 
and the people also whom thou hast chosen. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. So the earth, the people in it were made for the sakes of Israel. God's chosen, man. That's who the earth. Like we say, so guess what? They should be following our lead. We shouldn't be following their leads. Remember, the Most High God made Israel to be leaders and for people to come unto us. Let's get another precept on that thing. Go to 2nd Ezra chapter 7 and verse 10. Saying the same thing. This is the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 7 and verse 10. And I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion, because for their sakes I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statues, then was decreed that now is done. Meaning the decree was gone out to guess what? They're going to die. They're not going to be in mortar anymore. They're breaking my commandments. Guess what? I'm going to use my son to die for their sins, to bring them back into the fold. But at this point right now, they're going to have limitations on their life. You know, and that's what we're going through now. How many times have we seen young uh, black brothers being cut down so early in the streets or young Hispanic brothers being cut down so early in the streets. I mean, we fill up the jail population, fill up all these things, man. You know, that wasn't promised to us. We fell into these things because of what? Because of our sins and because of what? Celebrating wicked hell days like how we're doing now. You know, it's just straight madness and we got to come up out of these things, man. Let's go to the book of uh, First Kings. Chapter 8 and verse 47. Like I said, this is something that we have to constantly do. You know, as a nation of people, pray to the Most High God, repent, you know, and come up out of these ways and traditions of the other, other nations. You know, this is the book of 1 Kings, chapter 8, verse 47. I'm going to start at verse 46. Start at verse 45. So like it, brothers and sisters. Then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause. So the most high God maintains our cause when we're constantly praying and giving supplication unto him. That's, that's another word for throwing up prayers for the most high God, giving all unending glory unto him because we can never do those things enough. You know, giving us this opportunity right now to know who we are as a, a nation of people to guess what, give us this opportunity to actually worship him according to the scriptures. Verse 46 if they sinned against thee, for there is no man that sinned not, and thou be angry with them and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captive into the land of our enemy far or near. And this is a far captivity because we sin. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in the land, whether they were carried captive and repent, rem meaning remember who you are, Israel, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and repent out of the traditions and the ways of these Gentile nations. It says, and repent and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captive, saying, we have sinned, we have done perversely, we have committed wickedness, verse 48, and so return unto thee with all thy heart and with all their soul, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. So it's our job to constantly do what? Repent and come up out of these ways. Let's say any brothers and sisters got any questions or anything, put them in the chat. We got to make sure that, guess what? We're coming up out of these wicked hell of days, man. There's no other way. But like we say, you can't, brothers and sisters can't keep trimming their ways. Oh, we do it for the kids. You know, celebrating birthdays, celebrating Christmas. We got to shake that because you won't read nowhere in the Bible where Christ celebrated his birthday. You know, where the prophets celebrated their birthdays. You won't read these things in the scriptures. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah. And we said we got to stop trimming our ways, man. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 2 and verse 33. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? So a lot of times our people celebrate these wicked things because guess what? They're trying to trim their ways to seek love. You know, we can't do that, man. Because guess what? Then you're putting your significant other or your children above the most high God. 
when you do that, you're going off and the most high got to end up killing or taking what you is putting over him. You know, you're basically making those things idols. You know, idolatry don't just come in just one way. Idolatry can come in many way, forms and fashions. It can come in the way of, guess what, Christmas. It can come in the way of celebrating your birthday. Because guess what, you're making that your God. You're not making the most high your God and your strength. I'm going to read this again. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 33. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways. So when we don't come up out of these ways and false traditions, guess what we're doing? We're teaching other people those wicked ways as well. You're teaching your children to guess what? Continue to celebrate your birthday is okay. Continue to thinking that celebrating Christmas is okay. That a fat white man is the one bringing you gifts and so forth and not your hard working mom or father. You know, that's keeping us up under the, 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 the lines of white supremacy. You know, and we, you ask a lot of brothers and sisters, do they hate white supremacy? They'll tell you unequivocally, yes. But then you ask them, do you celebrate Christmas? Yeah, well, you really don't hate white supremacy then. You know, because that is all built around white supremacy. Even when you go back to the history of Christmas and so forth, going back to over, over there in uh, England, where they have the traditions, Pistol Pete and Christmas and so forth. Brothers and sisters got to look into that history, man. There's some real dark stuff that comes with those things. Because like we said, over there, the origin of those things is that where were the slaves going into the elves and so forth? They paint the little elves black and they make mockery of us over there in that land during that time, man. Our people celebrating things to their mockery and to, the, to their detriment, basically. I'm going to read this again. It says, why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Therefore, has thou taught the wicked ones thy ways. So we got to come up out of those things and stop teaching our people evil traditions and evil ways, man. And most of God gave us his ways. Let's go back to find this precept. We say because those things, it will be a judgment for those things if we don't learn to come up out of it. Let's see. Let's see. First Timothy chapter six and verse twenty. This is the book of First Timothy, chapter 6 and verse, 10, uh, verse 20, Salaki. It says, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. We know what's committed to our trust, the law, statutes, and commandments. It says, avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of signs falsely so-called. So the Most High God is constantly telling us and warning us about, guess what, going all off on the deep end, taking to different uh, philosophies and different doctrines and so forth. Now, we tell brothers and sisters, we know brothers and sisters may watch certain videos and so forth. It's okay to watch certain ones because you do need to know what your enemies go into. So you'll be able to efficiently go into those things and destroy those doctrines. But you want to always make sure that you're not taken by those doctrines, especially if they come and go contrary to what the Bible is saying. You know, like we say, we know that science is real. Science is real, because we know our forefathers dealt in science. When you're reading the book of uh, Daniel chapter one, verse six on down. But if they're trying to put forth anything that goes against the Bible, then guess what? You got to cast those things away. That ain't nothing but vain babblings. That's all that it is. Let's go to the book of... That's what I want. Hebrews chapter 13. Like we said, because it's our job to do what? Keep God's commandments. Even 
Like we said, with the classic that we always bring out, Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 1. We always bring this thing out, man. We got to let our people know that we shouldn't be doing these things. We'll get other precepts too showing that it's not lawful to keep Christmas. We'll go to the precepts on birthdays as well. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh un unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with an axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They be upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. So the Most High God is telling us, don't do and follow the customs of the other nations. And he's describing this custom, which is going into what? Christmas. This is the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah was during the time of the Babylonian captivity. This was thousands of years before Christ even walked the planet Earth, man. So how in the hell are they going to try to say that Christmas is Christ's birthday when they was even celebrating it during this time? This even has a history which goes back to Nimrod and so forth. All the way back during the time of the Babylonian captivity. Most I got to telling us not to do these things, man. But our people do what? Our people trim their ways to guess what? To do those things, man. Just like Jeremiah he talked about birthdays. Let's go get it. It's the book of Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 14. It says, cursed be the day wherein I was born. Let not the day wherein my mother bear me be blessed. So we get that all the time. Happy birthday, happy blessed day, happy born day for people that's trying to be slick and stuff. Verse 15, cursed be the man who brought tidings to my father, meaning bringing gifts. Tidings is gifts. Saying, a man child is born unto thee, making him very glad. And let that man be as the cities which the Lord overthrew and repented not and let him hear the cry in the morning and the shouting at noontide because he slew me not from the wound or that my mother might have been my grave and her wound to be always great with me. Verse 18, wherefore I came out. So like it, wherefore came I forth out of the wound to see labor and sorrow that my days should be consumed with shame. So. Jeremiah was letting know, hey, we're not celebrating birthdays. And we say better is the end of a thing anyway than the beginning of it. He's literally showing us that even in the book of Job, what we always love to go to. But like we said, celebrating Christmas, celebrating your birthday, celebrating Father's Day, Juneteenth. No, we're not doing those things, man. Like we said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Another account of not celebrating your birthdays is the book of Job, chapter 3 and verse 1. After this, opened Job his mouth and cursed his day. And Job spake and said, let the day perish wherein I was born. And the night in which it was said, there is a man child conceived. Let that day be darkness. Let not God regard it from above. Neither let the light shine upon it. So even Job was giving accounts to where, guess what? He's letting our people know we're not celebrating those things. Even when you read in a satanic Bible, it tells you that celebrating your birthday is one of the highest forms of idolatry. Is the worship of oneself. You're putting yourself over the Most High God. And that's going against his laws, statutes, and commandments. Most High God warned us about those things, man. Let's go get it. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 34. He warned us of those things, man, about putting anything above them. Believe it or not, brothers and sisters. Yeah, exactly. Like Second Maccabees 6, 6 through 7. This is the book of Matthew chapter 6. I mean, chapter 10 in verse. Uh, I want to get straight to the point. Verse 37. The book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Meaning what? When you put.
put your son or your daughter, not to say that you shouldn't love your daughter, but you shouldn't be putting them above the most high God, meaning an aspect of what this class is going into. You're fighting within yourself because your little child is batting their eyes up at you and mama, I want to celebrate my birthday. Mama, I want to celebrate Christmas. And you know in the Bible that it tells you not to do those things and you give in to those things or you trim your ways according to the book of Jeremiah. Guess what? The most I got is going to put you to death because you literally just put that child and he, his wants above what the most high God wants. You know, and that's going off according to the scriptures. We cannot do that. I'm going to read this again. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Taking up that cross is meaning you're ready to go to bat for the most high God, even unto death. Because we know that the cross represents death. Taking up those burdens that Christ did, you know, going out to the highways and byways, trying to wake up our people. You want to put your wants, the wants of your wives, because brothers cater to their wives as well. You know, wives cater to husbands, moms cater to children and so forth. But when you put those things above the most high God, the most high God could, could kill you for those things, man. It's a judgment that would have to be paid for that. That's why he's giving us warning. On those things, do not put your children, do not put your wife, do not put your husband above the most high God, law, statutes, and commandments. We can't do that, brothers and sisters, in this world. We can't trim our ways, man, to seek love. Oh, I'm just going to uh, celebrate Father's Day because, you know, my husband is a real good father. Well, guess what? It's other. You should be showing him that every day. You shouldn't just be restricted to the day that Esau gives our people to do that. And letting you know you're still in captivity. Esau tell you a holiday to celebrate our people. Guess what? Run to the stores. Barely got enough money to pay their bills or keep food in the house. But guess what? You'll run and burden yourself with all these hell days that Esau has given us. No. Then you know our people are still in captivity, man. Right to this day. Our people are still programmed as a nation of people. So that's what the Bible is doing. The Bible is deleting a program that we don't learn from Esau, the so-called white man, and reprogramming, reprogramming us back with God's law, statutes, and commandments. Because all these things are just unnecessary burdens. That's all that they are. You know, the more and more our people try to celebrate these hella days because, hey, it ain't even Father's Day and they already about to bring up the next hella day. All praise to the Most High God. They used to keep up with those things. You know, now, hey, they far behind us. Now, we keep up with them to an extent to guess what brain classes out and to guess what destroy those doctrines. You know, that's the only reason why. But the more and more you get into this truth, the more and more, guess what? You got to come up out of the way of the world. Let's get that, man. Let's say one of the main precepts, man. First uh, John chapter four, verse... Chapter 2, verse 15. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 2, and verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So Christ is letting us know. John the Revelator is letting us know because that's who wrote the book of uh, 1 John. He's letting us know that, guess what? If we're loving the world or the things that's in the world, guess what? The love of God is not in us. You know, stop listening to Sister Betty. Stop listening to uh, Brother Jenkins or Dink Deacon Jenkins. No, uh-uh. If it's not coming up out of this Bible, then guess what? It's straight out of a lie. Book of 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, again from the top. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father, but of the world. So these things that our people are celebrating, these things are not of the Bible, man. These things are solely of the world. We just gave you the history on Father's Day. This so-called white woman brought this thing up just because they had just had Mother's Day, you know, and even trying to commemorate that accident that they had at a coal mine. You know, it's all for Edomites, man. So Israelite so-called black man, you weren't even in their thoughts 
when they was bringing this thing up, but then you will celebrate these things as if, guess what? You're on equal playing fields with them. Hispanic, man. I mean, these things makes no sense, man. Like we said, we got to come up out of these ways. Verse 17, and the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abided forever. So if you can't come up out of these ways, when the most high God, guess what? Shake and destroy these kingdoms. You're going to be caught up with those things as well, man. You know, if you can't learn to overcome these things, coming up out of these ways, coming up out of these wicked traditions, you're going to get caught up with that thing, man. I mean, it is what it is. Like we say, the most high God is not all love. He's not all love. He has other emotions. He had other feelings as well. He has hatred. He has righteous indignation. And guess what? We're pissing the most high God off when we celebrate these things, man. We got to come up out of these things. We said, brothers, got, brothers and sisters got any questions, put them in the chat. We said, wasn't going to be a long class. Just kind of wanted to go at this. Uh, and we say Juneteenth, Father's Day. And we say, brothers and sisters need to be getting in the spirit to get ready for the Feast of Tabernacles. You know, it's never too early to start getting prepared for these things. You know, I even think about my wife. She always say that, you know, you know how. Uh, Israelites, we always on CP damn time here. No, start preparing and getting these things in order right now. If you got to get a little by little. I know for us at the Battle Axes, I know we're contemplating on certain camping grounds to go to. But uh, for any brothers and sisters that are not a part of a congregation or don't have a congregation near you, y'all more than welcome to come down. If y'all watch the Battle Axes, you know, uh, to celebrate those things with us, you know, making yourself prepared for the Day of Atonement, pray, fasting, not just on the Day of Atonement, you know, but days before then. I know uh, Brother Naquam, you know, was contacting brothers. I know he reached out to Captain Jeroboam, reached out to us, you know, to partake in that nationwide fast that, you know, trying to get all the nations on one accord with. So, you know, that's a mighty thing. That's a mighty uh thing to do for our nation. I'll praise to the most like God for the Lord putting on that brother's spirit. But we say we kind of want to just address these things and make sure that brothers and sisters are coming up out of the ways and traditions of Esau and start putting back on our true heritage and our, and our uh, true customs, according to the Bible, man. Let's say, check it out. Go back up to see if I miss something when they cut it off. Yeah, that's right. The Gentiles, they also inherited lies too as well. My brother put uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 20 on there. Uh, uh, brother Live Branch Channel, he said, y'all read Old of Solomon. I'm not sure what that is. I, if you can kind of clarify, just seeing it going back up. I don't know if you're talking about the book of Solomon. You know, we got the wisdom of Solomon, but even the Bible tells us to uh, be careful about making many books where there is no end. So I don't know if you still on her, kind of clarify that. Yeah, that's right. You know, they gave us all these wicked hella days. Huh? Like we tell brothers and sisters, let me see, no more questions. Uh, making sure you're striving to keep the commandments, striving to do what practice a righteous rehearsal. You know, like we say, thank you for brothers and sisters that are supporting about access, that's sending alms, you know, sending donations and so forth. You know, we're trying to get out to some of those cities near you. We're trying to plan a trip for Houston, trying to really get that uh in the works, you know, hook up with our brother uh that's down there, you know, so we don't have a set date for now, but I know we're trying to push toward that mark. I know uh, we always tell brothers and sisters to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. So we just go back to the law that we brought out earlier in the book of Leviticus. We're kind of making uh, this law around a vocal point of the class. We'll just go back and read. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 20 and verse 23. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation which are cast out before you, 
for they committed all these things and therefore I abhorred them. So the Most High God is telling us, guess what? Not to walk in the manners. The manners is going into Father's Day because God didn't give us that uh, hella day, you know, Juneteenth, guess what? None of those things. If it's not ordained in the book of Leviticus chapter 23 or in the first five books or throughout the Bible, guess what? We're not commanded, to, we're commanded not to celebrate those things, brothers and sisters. So like we say, giving all honor and praises to Yahweh and to his son, Yahweh Shah, we say Shalom.